Hey, welcome to service. It's so good to have you with us. Um, I don't know what kind of week you've had this week. Some, some weeks are good. Some weeks are not so great. Um, but I want you to remember that God is here. He is near to you. And he, sh- he wants us to enter into a worshipful spirit and time. So I want to encourage you just to lay down anything that has you troubled or stressed right now. And just take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and enjoy the service. We have a great one lined up for you today. And uh, I'm going to pass it over to Pastor Kevin. Thank you, Pastor Natalie. And I am looking forward to this particular service. I hope that uh, you have had a great week. Uh, I know for myself, it has been a crazy busy week. Uh, You may or may not know this, but this is um, kind of the end of our business year as a church. and, And that requires us to get all kinds of reports into the government and into our head district and all that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, that can be tedious. Uh, But at the same time, one of the things that I always enjoy about this time of year, despite the extra work and all the things that go into that, is that it gives me an opportunity to look back on all the things that God has done over the past year. Uh, And not only that, uh, there's a section in our business report where I cast a vision uh, of where I think God wants us to go within the next year. And, you know, I want to throw out this invitation. If you're interested in getting that report, let me know. Uh, We're going to be mailing it out to each of our members uh, or getting it into their hands. And we we would love to be able to send it out to you. It's kind of an open report to anybody who wants to see kind of what's going on in our church. And so we would love to be able to do that for you. But I do want to share a scripture with you today uh, and then take a few moments to kind of open us in prayer. And so uh, I want to share with you a scripture that has kind of blessed my heart this week as I read it. And it comes from Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Wherever you, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. And you know, that's, that's my prayer for you today. Uh, you know, every opportunity that we get together like this is an opportunity for God to work on our hearts. And I know that I, I want Him to continue working on me, and I hope that that's your prayer as well. I'm looking forward to this particular service uh, because uh, over the past couple of days, I know that uh, God has really put on my heart, uh, you know, to pray for our local churches. And uh, I want to I want to call you to do that as well. Uh, in just a few moments, uh, Pastor Natalie is going to be sharing an interview that she did this week with uh, Pastor Joanne uh, from Shelburne. Um, we we want to check in with some of the churches that are surrounding us. Uh, we want them to know that we're praying for them, and I, I want to invite you to pray with us as we do that. And so uh, I want to open up in prayer today, and then uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Pastor Natalie. Uh, for the interview, and then she's going to share with us some words from Scripture. And uh, we've got a song for you today, and I'm just, I'm kind of looking forward to what God might want to do in our hearts. So let's let's take a moment and pray together, and I would encourage you to be praying for some of the churches around us as well. Uh, you know, we're, we're into this together. We're not in competition with each other. We're actually stronger together, and we should be lifting up some of our fellow churches. And so uh, I want to encourage you to pray for Shelburne this week, and we're going to have another church that we're going to highlight next week. So let's, let's pray together. God, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to be able to come together today. God, I, I know that, um, that uh, some of us really miss being in church together one-on-one. And yet at the very same time, God, I thank you for this ability to be able to come together like this in this uh, you know, internet world and be able to worship together and to share together, and to, to look at what you're doing in our lives, and talk about how you're making a difference in our lives. And God, I, I want to thank you for the ways in which you have taken care of us over the past uh, few weeks. Uh, I think especially of our finances, and God, I thank you for each and every person who has been giving financially to our church. 
I know that finances aren't the end of the world. And um, God, I know that uh, it, it, to our world, a lot of times people feel like all we do is ask for money. And yet, uh, you know, it takes money to do ministry. And I thank you that you have provided for us over and over again. And you've used many people to be able to do that. And God, I just ask blessings on each one of those who have been doing that lately. And God, I, I want to pray for some of the other churches in our area today. I, I know that, um, that we're not the only church that are finding these days difficult in more than one way, not just financially, uh, but trying to figure out how to connect with our people, uh, what it looks like to do church when you can't meet. Um, and God, I just want to pray right now for each and every church that surrounds us right now. And God, I especially want to lift up Shelburne as we go to this uh, interview next. God, may you be with Pastor Joanne. I, I know that she has been struggling through some physical issues in her life uh, for the last uh, couple of years. And, and God, I just want to pray that you would continue to be the Lord of those things. God, I thank you that uh, even when things seem impossible, you uh, allow us to be able to see you work in amazing ways. And God, we just would ask for that today in her life. And uh, God, I, I thank you for the ways in which you have helped her through uh, this whole change in, in ways of doing things. And I pray that you would give her the strength today and the wisdom today uh, to speak your word and, and to, to bring truth to the people around her and uh, to her community. So God, we, we ask your blessing on the rest of this service. Give us wisdom. Help us to know and understand the things that you have for us in your precious name. Amen. Welcome, Joanne. So glad to have you with me today. This is Joanne Ozon from Hope Wesleyan Church in Shelburne. I hope I said your name right. I always get confused with how to say that. Uh, <laughs> if I haven't said it right, Joe, correct me. And I'm going to pass it over to you so you can share just a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm Joanne from, well, we're in Shelburne. We've been here for Oh my, I think we're in a third year and uh, we did not see <laughs> coming to Shelburne. It was all God's plan that we just kind of followed. Um, my husband is the worship leader here and uh, he plays the piano and can't read a note of music. So I am blown away every time that he gets behind the piano and do what he do, <laughs> does every week. And uh, we've been loving it here. Um, we have no idea how long God has a plan for us here, but we're quite content here, and it's, Shelburne has become our home. Oh, that's wonderful to hear, and I know the people love you there. I've been down a couple of times uh, filling in your pulpit when you couldn't be there, and the people love you, so it's wonderful. It's a great family-oriented, loving place to serve, so I'm so glad that you're there. Um, Tell us, Joe, how are you doing personally through all of this and with everything that's been going on in your life? How are you doing? Um, I'm doing good. <laughs> and I can say that honestly for the first time in a long time because a lot of times people ask you, how are you doing? And your first response is good. And when in reality, I wasn't. Um, this time last year, I was battling cancer. And uh, I was in a wheelchair and had stage two spinal cancer and still served the church, <laughs> still came mm -hmm. and preached every Sunday. And um, I'm, I'm glad for what cancer has taught me. And I think, I think that's kind of prepared me for this storm that we're in because I, through cancer, I learned that um, depression is real. I really understood that, like, the darkness that comes with depression. And I don't think I would have understood that if I never had experienced that. So if there's anything good that came out of that uh, was to teach me that, you know, be still and know that I am God. And I, I, I really felt that. And I, I learned this, the support that we had here in our congregation. Our congregation supported us 100%. And uh, just the love that we had from them and anything that they could do and anything, it, it was just an encouraging time. I, um, probably about four months ago, I don't even know what day, month, year it is anymore, but about four months ago, my cancer came back. And I, I told our congregation right away and uh, they found another spot on my spine. 
um, but we caught it very early and um, I ended up just just taking some time short time off work and I had some consequences from the chemo and um, another surgery because of the chemo but we got through it and for the first time in about two years my health is probably stronger than it's ever been in a very long time that's so good to hear joanne and you know watching you walk through that and seeing you trust in god so much has been an inspiration to me for sure um, just having those conversations how you doing joanne you know, I'm not doing the best, but it's all good, you know, and just watching you walk through that and trust God has been so incredibly beautiful. And I'm just so thankful that God put us in path with one another so that we could be there for each other. It's been, it's been wonderful. Um, so how is your church doing and faring through all of this separation and isolation time? Um, our church is doing good. Um, we started off rough, I'll be honest. We, the first three weeks of this state of emergency, it was rough. <laughs> Everything was changing so quickly. All the rules and regulations were changing weekly. And us as smaller churches really don't have all the resources that we would have liked to successfully do an online service so trying to figure all of that out us as a church is uh was trying and I'm, I'm a school bus driver as well and because my life has been absolutely insane because they were two jobs and i'm go 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 all the time but for the first time i could put all my focus all my energy into the ministry and like I told you before that we have some pros and cons to every storm we have. Our church now has finally concepted that, okay, it's 1030 Sunday morning. I'm going to take this time and tune into our live service like I would if I was going to church. But it took them some time to get there. And I just think our congregation right now is just, they're starving for or gatherings, just, uh, I'm a hugger. <laughs> and I hear you. I'm telling you, I, I am deprived. And like, uh, we've, we've learned to do a ministry in different ways. Like going to uh, window, do window visits. Uh, we went to every single member of our church here about two weeks ago and gave every single member a bouquet of flowers. Yeah. And just to say, you know what, we're thinking about you, we're praying about you. And just to let them know that visually we're still here. And uh, because trying to do a ministry to a camera <laughs> is challenging. Um, and I, I wondered how many people like were really affected by not being able to gather. That, that was our biggest thing. And it, early on in this uh, pandemic, I, I read a quote and it says, we're all in the same boat together. And I went, oh, that could not be more wrong. Because yeah. we're definitely in the same storm together, but we're not all in the same boat together because some people are just not okay with, with not being able to gather, with not being able to have human interaction. And it's, some people went into a dark place. So it, it's not that we were all in the same boat, we're in the same storm. And it took me a while to figure that out, saying, you know what, just because I'm having an okay day doesn't mean that everybody in our congregation is. That is so true. It's so good that you have that perspective of seeing different people in different places because it's so true. We, we are not all going through this the same way. So that's wonderful. Um, what is something that God is speaking to your heart, Joe, personally through all of this, through your Bible reading? Is there something that God's kind of kicking your butt about these days? It, it's, I really got how many times have we heard the phrase be the church we have the opportunity to be the church and to me at first that was just merely words like okay we were always the church but now uh we're seeing our congregation calling one another praying with one another and uh i was out in sobeys the other day and 
I had my hair all up in the bun. I look kind of homeless. Like, and this woman's like, are you the pastor at Hope Wesleyan Church? And I said, yes, I am. And she said, I've been watching your services online. And uh, it hit me like, how many people are we reaching that we would never reach before? Mm -hmm. through this online service so it opened my eyes that yes we have been deployed to be the church it's not like god hasn't seen this storm coming he this was his plan and we really need to understand that he this was his plan and that we have to trust in him so for me it was just an aha moment to say you know he's going to see us through but it's the slowest moving storm i think that any of us has ever gone through absolutely so Pastor Joanne, how can we pray for you and for your church? I think for us, I think all of us have the same prayer, like just for guidance and patience and to get us through the storm, a sense of peace. Um, and the scripture says a peace that surpasses all understanding, which means that it's not for us to comprehend in any way, shape or form, because we couldn't humanly understand the kind of peace that God has and he gives that to us. We just got to receive it. And a lot of people haven't really figured that out, that we could have that same peace that he has. Like the, it's for us, for us, that's what I'm praying for our congregation is mm -hmm. Lord, just let your presence be real with them. Let them understand that just because we're absent from the church doesn't mean we're absent from God, that your presence is still there and that they could just tune into his Holy spirit and know that he's wherever we go. Mm, that is, that's great. Um, let me just take a moment and pray with you now as we close our time together. Thank you so much, Pastor Joanne, for taking your time and, and sharing. Let's pray. Heavenly God, we thank you that you are good and that you are here. We thank you for our sister church, Hope Wesleyan, and for their congregation and their leadership in Pastor Joanne. And Lord, I pray, binding our prayers together, today, Lord, that you would give peace and joy in the midst of this storm. Lord, that you would see us through it. And Father, would you strengthen our sister church and their leadership, God, as they maneuver these waters and get through, would you direct them in the way that you would have them to go? So Father, we thank you and praise you for all that you're doing in Hope Wesleyan. And we just are so encouraged by everything that is happening there. We give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. It's so great to be here with you today. Uh, today we're going to talk about attitude. And attitude does matter. And why does it matter? We're going to look into the scriptures to find that out. Hey, we all have an attitude. It can be good or bad, positive or negative. Sometimes it goes up and down throughout the day. But we can change our attitude. This is such an important thing. So right now, I'm going to get you all to take about 30 seconds and do a heart check. Can you take a few moments, look into your heart right now? How is your attitude? Pick one word to describe your attitude right now and share it with someone in the room with you. And if you're alone, speak that word out loud. Take a moment and do that. We're going to jump right into our scripture today. It's found in 1 Samuel 18. I'm going to read to you verses 5 to 16, and I'm reading from the ESV today. 1 Samuel 18, 5 to 16. And David went out and was successful wherever Saul sent him, so that Saul set him over the men of war. And this was good in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. As they were coming home when David returned from striking down the Philistine, the women came out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with songs of joy, and with musical instruments. And the women sang, 
to one another as they celebrated. Saul has struck down his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very angry and this saying displeased him. He said, they have ascribed to David ten thousands and to me they have ascribed thousands. What more can he have but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day on. The next day, a harmful spirit from God rushed upon Saul and he raved within his house while David was playing the lyre. As he did day by day, Saul had his spear in his hand. And Saul hurled the spear for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David evaded him twice. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, but he had departed from Saul. So Saul removed him from his presence and made him a commander of a thousand. And David had success in all his undertaking, for the Lord was with him. And when Saul saw that he had great success, he stood in fearful awe of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, and he went out and came in before them. This morning, we're going we're gonna to focus on these two men. These two men, David and Saul. We have two men on the same side, fighting the same enemy, common, united together through God to save God's people. Now, there's some things that I want to review with you that we've, we've talked about over the last few weeks. Pastor Kevin has shared these with you. The first is that Saul was chosen to be king, but he was disobedient. That was in 1 Samuel 9. Then David was anointed by Samuel to be king, but he wasn't given the seat or the power to be king and then David was called to play for King Saul when he was distressed. Those are both found in 1 Samuel 16. And then David went out and he killed the giant Goliath that everyone, including King Saul, was afraid of, which is found in 1 Samuel 17. All of this has brought us to this place today where we see these two men, these two men who begin to clash and we see how each one responds. In verse 5 of chapter 18, we see that David was successful wherever Saul sent him. Everything that he did, he was successful. David was returning from striking down the Philistines, and the women came out praising him. They were excited, and Saul began to get jealous. Now, Saul's jealousy wasn't a fleeting thing. It didn't come and go. It came and it stayed, and it grew. That anger grew in his heart, and it became dark, and it, it became a monster within him. He didn't even try to control it. He allowed it to grow and grow, to fester and to get ugly. His jealousy turned into hatred. Saul allowed that root of jealousy to turn into hatred. And that boiled up inside him and drew his thoughts away from God. Instead of him focusing on God and the goodness that God was allowing him to have in his king's service, he allowed to become jealousy and a root of bitter envy. Saul became completely wrapped up in himself. And all he could think about was how he was not being honored and how he was not being praised. And we see what happens when that anger and that jealousy becomes too much. God removed his blessing from Saul because his anger and his jealousy had become this bitter rage within him. Verse 10 tells us that he had a harmful spirit from God that rushed upon him. Saul's heart was being twisted and darkened by his own thoughts and deeds. He allowed these negative thoughts to consume and take over his life. David, on the other hand, seemed to take things in stride. He, take them, he took them as they came without it rattling him too much. He killed that giant Goliath with a smooth stone. This Goliath who had held the nation of Israel frozen and paralyzed with fear but not only that, after Goliath was dead, the men of Israel got behind David and they went and they chased the Philistines out 
They got rid of them. They, there were some that were killed and some that were just ran off. But everything David did, he did with success. David continued to serve Saul and he led the troops. He played the heart for Saul whenever Saul was distressed. Even when the king threw a spear at him and he attempted to kill him, David went back. It says that that David escaped twice. David was faithful. He was faithful to the place and the circumstances he found himself in. And there's a passage in verse 14 that tells us why. Verse 14 says, And David had success in all his undertakings, for the Lord was with him. You might want to underline that part of the verse, for the Lord was with him. Do you see the difference? Saul was haughty. He was prideful and he thought that the world should revolve around him. He wanted everyone to worship and praise him and not to give praise to anyone or anything else. But David was humble David was a humble man who humbled himself before God. He was chosen to be king, but not given the seat or the power to do that. So he served. He served his king. He was humble. Saul was resentful. His anger and his jealousy came out in such negative ways. And he just took out his anger and his resentment on David and tried to kill him. But David was resolute. He stood firm knowing who his God was and who he was truly serving. And third, Saul was forsaken. In his anger and his bitter jealousy, God removed his favor and instead instead sent a distressing, tormenting spirit on Saul. But on the other hand, David, he was filled He was filled with the power of God to do the things that God had called him to do. As you can see from this contrast of Saul and David's lives, our attitudes matter. Our attitudes are priceless. We have control over our attitudes. Listen, no one else is responsible for my attitude. And no one else is responsible for yours. We are responsible for our own attitudes and we get to choose. We go through seasons where we have a tough time. And if you're living on this earth right now, if you're watching this from anywhere on earth, you know that it's tough right now. Whether being isolated from family and friends is hard on you, whether being home doing your schoolwork or home doing your work, whether um, not being able to just pick up and go and do what you want to do. Maybe a trip of a lifetime has been canceled or even postponed. Funerals and losses and people that are sick that you love, that you can't gather together and support and mourn. Babies being born that we so desperately want to hold in our arms and meet. We can't. I could go on and on, but I won't. Those are some things that could give us a stinky attitude if we allow them to. We could become angry and depressed. We could take it out on everyone around us. We could get mad and have a three-year-old temper tantrum. My kids didn't have terrible twos. It was three. So I always refer to that. Or we can shift our perspective. And in doing so, we shift our attitudes. What if we looked at this as a time of family time that we can gather together and we can love one another, that we can spend those long lingering moments of conversation and not worry about having to get ready to do something else? What about the games nights and playing catch in the yard? What about working in your gardens with your hands in the dirt and just feeling and knowing that you're connected to something so much bigger than yourself? God is in all of that. What about taking time to learn a new skill or developing a skill that maybe you've lost a little bit of? 
How about writing a letter the old-fashioned way and sending it in the mail? There's something special about that. See, we get to choose our attitudes. We get to choose how we are going to respond to things. Are we going to react or are we going to respond? I choose to respond because react is rash. It's off the top of our heads. If you take time to read through First and Second Samuel, you're going to see that Saul didn't have it all bad. And David didn't have it all good. So that was not the reason for their attitudes. Their attitudes were of their own choosing. Like David and Saul, as I've said, we get to choose. We get to choose what kind of attitude we're going to have and how we're going to relate to things. So the beginning of the message, I asked you to choose a word that described your attitude. Which list would it fit in? Would it fit in Saul or David? Let's review them. Saul was haughty and David was humble. Saul was resentful and David was resolute. Saul was forsaken and David was filled. Where do you fit? Maybe you're not a Saul and maybe you're not a David. Maybe you're somewhere in the middle. But where do you want to be? David's heart was turned to God, fully and completely surrendered to God. He spent his time praising and worshiping and seeking after God. See, Saul, when he was chosen as king, was the tallest man, head and shoulders above everyone, and handsome as he could be. And he knew it. His attitude demonstrated that he thought he was all that, and as a friend of mine said, and says, and a bag of chips at the same time. But he was threatened by David and allowed those negative emotions and his attitude to take root and bear fruit. I want to share with you today that if you struggle with negative emotions, jealousy, and anger that develop into hatred, there is hope. You are not doomed to be a Saul. There is hope today. I've been there. I understand that life of anger and jealousy and hatred that go deep, deep within the heart and soul. I was so negative, full of jealousy and anger and hatred. But... Jesus. He is the one who made the difference. A few years ago, I was in that place of anger and hatred and someone pointed me to Jesus. And I'll be honest with you, I was so full of anger and hatred that that person got it. They got all that anger out. My face was red and I was angry and I was just screaming at this person but something happened within me because that person took it they took every negative word I said I probably even swore a little maybe a lot Um, but that person took everything that I said and they listened and in the end of it all they said I understand where you're coming from I hear what you're saying but you need Jesus. There was no question in my mind that there was something very different about this person who I'd been friends with for a lot of years. But she took the time to care about what I was saying and my my attitude was terrible. But she cared enough to point the way to the one who could make the difference. My past experience with Jesus had been People who said they were Christians, but they were judgmental and they were angry and they were nasty and mean. That was my experience. Not every single Christian, but my experience was not good in that area. And maybe yours is there too. I don't know. But because this friend pointed me to Jesus and accepted me for who I was, 
She also told me to start reading the book of John. She recommended that that's where I start. And I did. And for the first time in my life, I started to see a Jesus who loved people, who actually cared about the people that were around him that were hurting. I saw this Jesus speak life into a woman's life who was broken. I saw this Jesus heal people. I saw this Jesus pick people up out of the ditch instead of push them in further. As I learned about this, it changed my heart. I began to see who I truly was. I began to see my anger and my hatred and my jealousy, my frustration, and I didn't like it very much. I began to see that there was something different that I could choose. I had become someone that I didn't really recognize or honestly, I didn't even like her. I wanted that peace and that joy and that love and that acceptance that I saw in the book of John in the person of Jesus. Maybe you're listening to this And you know that you're struggling with your attitude. You know that your attitude isn't where it should be. And maybe it's not even where you want it to be. Maybe you're listening to me and struggling with the thought of, is this Jesus really real? Does it really matter? Does he really matter? Maybe you're wondering, does Jesus really care about me? That was one of my big questions. And I want to tell you, yes. Yes. Jesus is real. Jesus does care. And Jesus loves you. I know this. I know it for a fact because I experienced being a person who was full of anger and hatred. And Jesus loved me anyway. I experienced His love changed my life. And if you don't want to take that, you're not quite ready to take that, I know it because the Bible says in John 3.16, for God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, the world. And if you are watching this and hearing this, you are part of that world. And you can know that he does care. If you look at the list of things that I shared about Saul and you see yourself there, you can know that he loves you. If you look at the list and you see yourself as David, you can know that he loves you. And if you're anywhere in between, you can be assured that he does love you. And if you're a Saul, you can trade that Saul in for David because you get to choose. It's a choice. Our attitudes are our own choosing. But it's surrendering yourself to Jesus. It's letting go of your pride and jealousy and anger and hatred and all of those negative things. And instead, choosing Jesus, choosing Jesus to forgive you and your sinful, selfish behaviors. It is choosing and letting go and allowing him to fill you instead with humility and peace and grace and love to the overflow. It's asking Jesus to forgive you of your awful ways or even your good ways, but admitting that you can't do this on your own and you need his help It's simply saying his name and telling him that you need him and allowing him to transform your life starting right now. See, you get to choose. This is going to be an ongoing learning experience. This is not a one and done, simple magic wand kind of thing. This is a commitment. This is a lifestyle. This is a life learning. Be patient. And keep Jesus at the center of all things. Look to him 
And when you have opportunity to be angry and hateful and resentful and full of rage, instead look to Jesus. Look to him. Be patient. Make it a daily journey of seeking Jesus in everything that you do. Let him guide you. See, Saul was chosen by God to be king over the nation of Israel, and instead, Saul chose to put himself first. He chose to look at himself, and that allowed his pride and his jealousy to destroy every good thing. But David chose to remain humble and wait on the Lord and be faithful and do everything that God had asked him to do. Today, which will you choose? We're going to take a moment and we're going to give you about 30 seconds. And I have three questions. Not all questions will apply to every person, but think these through. Because remember, today you get to choose. The first question is Are you following him? Are you following Jesus? The second question is, if not, are you ready to follow him? And the third is, if you are a follower of Jesus, are you following him the way that he wants you to? So take 30 seconds, think on these things, and when we come back, we're going to close with a word of prayer. Before we go to prayer, I want to let you know that next week, um, Pastor Kevin will be looking at 1 Samuel 19. So if you want to read up ahead and see where we're going to be headed next week, that would be wonderful. So whatever your answers are to those questions, I'm going to pray today. And I would ask for you, if you feel comfortable, if you are ready, um, pray along with me. Join your heart with me and pray whatever fits your situation because Jesus is waiting and he loves you and he will help you with your attitude. You do not have to be perfect, but he's calling you just as you are in this moment. Let's pray together. Heavenly and gracious Father, God, we come before you with grateful hearts knowing that you are here and that you fill us with your spirit and with your love God, that you can take um, the worst of the worst, Lord, and transform them into your person that you want them to be. God, you have good plans for each one of us. So, Father, I think of those out there right now, Lord, who've made a decision today and they want to follow you. So, God, I just pray that you would speak to their hearts and draw them to you. Lord, if, if there's anyone out there who chooses to make this decision today, God, I, will, I, I look to you for wisdom. And God, we pray together that they will come to know you. So if you are out there and you want to accept Jesus as your Savior today, pray this along with me. God, I know that I'm a sinner and that I need you. Jesus, will you come and be with me? I give you my heart and I ask for your direction. Fill me with your spirit and direct my steps. God, I, I praise you for those who have made that decision today and that they would um, just come before you each day and seek you. Lord, for those who have, have decided that they want to recommit their life, I pray, Lord, that you would be with them, 
that you would draw them to you and help them each day to make those decisions that draw them into a deeper relationship with you. For those who who are still uncertain, God, I pray that your spirit would speak to their hearts and draw them to you. Lord, as we've looked at attitudes today and looked at Saul and David and the difference between the two, I pray, God, that you would speak to our hearts, that we would know you and that we would find you and that we would be soft, that our hearts would be soft towards you and that we would be able to hear you when you call us. Lord, I I thank you for the opportunity that you gave me those years ago, Lord, to trade in my anger and my hatred, my fears for your hope and your joy and your peace. God, you've transformed my heart, and I, I praise you for that. I thank you. Lord, I pray that you would do a transforming work in each one who watches this, in many people all across this nation and the globe. God, we pray for your grace and your mercy and ask that you would continue to hold us close. Guide us in your ways, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear Falling on my ear The Son of God Thanks, Brent and Louise. We appreciate your music ministry and all that you do. It's just, it's so great to worship together. Um, We have a couple of announcements for you today. The drive-in service that we had last Sunday was phenomenal. We had a great time of uh, worship and fellowship together. Even at a distance, we can still fellowship together. It's something when God's people gather. 
And I just want to let you know that our next one will be on Father's Day. We're looking forward to that. And uh, we did have some space left in the parking lot. We do have to uh, follow those rules of distancing. So um, we'd love to see some more people come out. And what's exciting is that we even had a neighbor mention to Pastor Kevin that they could hear it from their house. So that's kind of cool. Um, we are uh, remember too that our drive-in service will be weather permitting. So kind of watch our page for updates on that in case we have to cancel because of weather. Um, we will also be doing the recorded services as well. So that you, if you can't make it out or you're not comfortable to come out, you'll still be able to watch that online. We're going to keep that going and uh, pray that that will be a blessing to many people. Uh, the Bible study that I've been doing finished. So we're going to take a little bit of a break and be watching for what's coming next. Uh, I've got a couple of ideas and we'll see how that goes. And uh, as I solidify those plans, I'm going to put that out and we would love to have you join that. It will be on Zoom. And uh, so if you don't have the app, you can just download that app online and we'll be able to gather together and meet face to face for that on our uh, internet. Um, love to have you join us for that. So uh, we've had a great service here today and we hope that you're having a great week. Um, set your attitude right. Attitude matters and it is your choice. So decide that you're going to have a great week and trust God with all of it. Um, God bless you and may you just enjoy everything that God has given you.